Okay, welcome back to the show. And I'm just going to jump right in, everybody, because I'm very excited about our guest this week, and I've been looking forward to this conversation. I have Maricel Polizo with me, and I first met her <laughs> from afar, but I'm with Keller Williams. And back at the end of February, we were at Keller Williams National Event called Family Reunion, and we had some amazing speakers at this event. I've already talked to you about my notes from Tony Robbins. And then we had the one and only Mel Robbins, no relation to Tony. And Mel was fantastic. If you're not familiar with Mel Robbins, she's an author. She's a coach. She has one of the top five podcasts in the country. And the, that's the Mel Robbins show. And she was talking to us about fear. And she was sharing some thoughts with all of us about what happens when we stay stuck in fear and what can change when we decide to move out of fear. She shared her technique that some of you probably are familiar with, which is five, four, three, two, one, which is basically counting backwards like a blast off so that it can move you forward and help you change what you're thinking, change your state. And in the middle of her talking with all of us, there were about, I don't know, 15,000 of us there in the convention hall she started to make it known that she was looking for someone in the audience to talk to. And I was sitting about, I was sitting one aisle and two rows away from Maricel when Mel Robbins came up to her. And I think now I want you to meet Maricel and she can talk to you a little bit about that experience. But I think we'll talk about a lot of things because I also heard you being interviewed, Maricel, by James Shaw. And I learned a lot more about you. And that's when I knew for sure I needed to reach out and get to know you more than anything, but invite you on to this podcast to share a little bit more of your story. And I feel like you could do a lot to inspire people. So welcome. And thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's really nice to see you too. Marisol, before we get into your experience with Mel, Robbins, just tell us a little bit about yourself, because I think that everyone would like to feel connected to you through this conversation. So I am 42 year old single mother of four, and I was previously a nurse, a cardiac nurse for a little over 10 years. And I got COVID taking care of a patient and felt ill and ended up needing over 12 surgeries, including brain surgery. And during that time, I decided to look for something, anything to give me more purpose to keep going. So I used my previous experiences that I had in life to select what I wanted to do. And based on a previous experience with a realtor that I had known and that was really sweet to me during a really hard time in my life, I decided to go for real estate and it has been super rewarding. I really do enjoy the facet of being able to transform people's dreams into reality and the emotion that goes behind it. Whereas nursing is definitely a giving career as well and rewarding. You just only have a brief moment, but with real estate, you get to keep that relationship and see things transpire. So that's where I'm at here today. That is fascinating. Okay, so you jumped right into a lot there with your life story. So you were a nurse and <laughs> how long were you a nurse? Over 10 years. And unfortunately, you got COVID early on in the pandemic. And that was before we had really the, the vaccine and before there were a lot of protocols in place. And what you just described, I, I can't imagine if, if we can go there for a few minutes. What was that? I, I don't even know how to ask the question. Like you could say, what was that like? Right. But that's not even a, what when you look back now on that time. And you went through something really hard. What have you, if anything, really pulled away from that experience that you feel might be an opportunity or a lesson besides a new career? Oh my goodness. Definitely during the pandemic and prior to getting ill, it was just being strong in my faith. Mm -hmm. Just everybody was so scared. And it was a lot of chaos at the hospital. The things that nobody really showed or said there was a lot of supplies being stolen 
and nurses were super short-handed so we were wearing like one mask for the whole week and it was a pretty scary time so trying to find peace in the midst of chaos was mm. definitely what was like our aim because you're supposed to be there for a patient and that's ill and then if you're coming off worried and scared it doesn't really help anybody so it was definitely trying to find peace in the chaos. And I think that that's pretty much the lesson that I've taken from me throughout all of this. Same when I was diagnosed with the COVID and ended up with the brain surgery and all of the surgeries, people would ask me, how is it that you, you keep going? Because it was very easy to stay positive first surgery maybe second surgery, third surgery, then it was after a while, you could see the people around you that was rooting for you or yeah. starting to lose faith or hope in not just, I, I, obviously not in me, but it felt like that at times. But mm -hmm. I think they would be like, what's wrong with the doctors? And there was just a lot of negativity. And trying to find peace in the chaos for me was like the simple things. Like my daughter, she was younger at the time I think she was maybe seven or six I know she was doing kindergarten on zoom and I would just listen for her or hear her speaking and saying trying to read or just her laugh and stuff and that brought me a lot of peace and just being like okay if I can just make it another week or so because it was very difficult to get out of bed and stuff but just finding little things that brought me peace helped me so much. So that's pretty much the lesson I definitely learned from this. That is so powerful. And this show is about helping people think bigger, helping people think differently, right? Seeing past their limitations, working through fear. And most of our listeners are probably an entrepreneur, maybe real estate, obviously, uh, in other businesses or not. But I think that when we look at these conversations we have and, and, and we talk about what we're trying to work through, whether it's a challenge with our strategic plan or it's a, a challenge in our own belief around our capability. And then you hear about people who go through something really traumatic like you went through. You start to put some things in perspective and you realize that I, I guess what's coming to mind is as human beings, we can do hard things. We can do hard things if we really work through our fear and it sounds like you just really focused on faith. And I love when you said, find peace in the midst of chaos. That's a great takeaway right there for anybody. Yes. So that's definitely what kept me going, what still keeps me going too, because there's like an aspect of your faith, but that I don't think you, I'm trying to hold everything together mm -hmm. and to push through mentally. You can tell yourself things, read things, find faith from your surroundings and so forth but at the same time you kind of lose a little bit of yourself like I was losing I guess over time confidence in myself because the person that I was no longer that person at the midst of all of this I had been going through a divorce so I no longer had that house or that relationship I was now a single mom now I was sick I was no longer a nurse and so it was just I feel like moving forward when Mel came even though I was in the right mindset of I can do this I was like not wanting to be seen at the same mm -hmm. time I don't know if that makes sense but no it makes a lot of sense yeah it's like we're a soul, right? But then we also have this outer and now I'm no longer any of what I used to be. And I just got used to doing rather than being. And so mm -hmm. I feel like being seen was very difficult for me. It was very difficult for me. And I just was super insecure, I guess you would say. And you don't really realize the dynamic of things when you're like oh I'm good here but you should mind body and soul for sure yeah. The yeah you guys as we start to unpack this story for you you're gonna see why this is such an incredible story and why when I was sitting there in the audience like I said I was very close to where you were sitting so I could look right at you and see the facial expressions the energy and you looked like someone who was just did not want to be seen. And so just to paint the scene for everybody. So Mel Robbins is talking on stage. 
to, like I said, about 15,000 of us and really just killing it as she always does and talking about fear and talking about things that are hard sometimes and that we have to make decisions every day, even just to get out of bed, right? And hearing now more of your backstory, I'm sure that was resonating with you. And then she decides that she's going to come off the stage to find someone in the audience to talk to about fear. And it was really interesting because you see people trying to jump out of their seat, waving their hands. She's like, yeah, no, you're not the one I want to talk to because you're too ready. You're too ready to talk to me. And suddenly she's in front of you. And what is going through your mind when Mel Robbins is literally standing in front of you in your row and asking to talk to you in front of 15,000 people? Were you dying a little bit inside? Because something That's tells me I not... Was- <laughs> I was mortified. I, if I could have fit under the chair, I would have went under the chair. Like I thought about it for a split second and I just looked up at her and every single emotion that you could possibly feel like shame, insecurities, everything was fear. Everything just came to my face. And I remember having tears in my eyes and I just told her, no, I was like, no, no. I'm not. And she I said, no. She said- And she said, yes, I was like, no. And I remember having tears in my eyes. Yeah. And I could see you trembling. Like I said, I was sitting close enough that I could see you trembling. And so what happened next? She asked you to stand up. And do you remember what she said? How it started? Um, uh, Yeah. She asked me if I could just make the decision to walk with her a little bit and, and open an envelope. And so in my brain, I was like, okay, everybody's watching you just get the envelope done and then you'll sit down. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. So I went and I opened the envelope and I think she wanted me to look into the cameras and I was like, no. Yeah. there. Remember not wanting to be seen or heard. (laughs) Convention hall, right? So we've got 15,000 people. There's big screens everywhere from the stage around the room. And so Marisol is right there front and center and she had three envelopes and she asked you to open the first one and, and you finally did. And what did it say? And then it said to join her on stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now it's going through your mind. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, everybody's looking at me. And if I say no, I'm going to disappoint like everybody. And I was just thinking, I was like, God, this has got to be like, something that God wants me to do because I would never do anything like this. So I was just like, okay, I will do it. I was definitely trying to be in a positive mindset, Mm -hmm. but just as she had explained to us in that mere second where I said, okay, the back of my head was like, what are you doing? Why are you going? And then I was thinking, I can't even move my legs. Like I was trembling beyond And then I was like, okay, how am I going to walk there? I can't even walk. And then I was thinking, well, I didn't wear the right shoes. I didn't, (laughs) all these these things just started going through my head. So it was very, I could. Because because our brain starts to create all these reasons why we can't do something, right? Because the fear starts getting bigger, right? So I know everyone can relate to this. We've all been there. And the fear starts getting bigger. And so our subconscious mind wants to protect us and tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't go forward because it's quote unquote dangerous. And then Mel put her arm around you. Yes. Encouraged you. And you, and the, and what happened? Did you just, did you do five, four, three, two, one? Did you make I it? Did, I did. I did do the five, four, three, two, one. I said, yes, I walked with her. And the whole time, I'm not even going to lie. I was, this is going to go viral. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Everything in my head, I was like, what are you doing? Okay, this isn't enough. And then when I got up there, I just, I couldn't breathe. I literally could. I I could vouch for that. We could see it on the screen. I was afraid you were going to pass out on us. No, and I was in her armpit because. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I remember that. Because I was going to pass out. And then the nurse in me was like, oh my gosh. Your heart is like erratic right now. You're sweating profusely. Yeah, I mean, it's a physical reaction to fear. I was. Yes, I was. And I just... When you look back, do you know what you were afraid of when you think about it? What was the fear about? I think 
okay. So like I had said, she and she demonstrated that too, is that the longer we sit in fear, the worse it gets. Yes. I feel like because I had been away from so much of myself for such a long time and not wanting to be seen or wanting to be heard or anything like that because of everything that's happened to me and so forth. I was just sitting in all of that fear and then it just came to a head. Yeah. So I just want everyone (laughs) listening to understand that in this moment, when we're watching this happen with Maricel and Mel, we didn't know anything about Maricel. It wasn't like Mel Robbins interviewed you. We didn't know anything about even how long you'd been in real estate, right? We just saw someone that she connected with, I I believe energetically, right? She really zoned right in and found someone who would not really want to do this or be comfortable to prove her point of what we can teach ourselves to do to move out of fear. And she even at one point said, you're like the perfect person for this, right? Because as I said, you were having this physical reaction now you're up on stage and we're rooting for you. Like we are just sending you all kinds of love because we know, even though we're not quite sure what's happening, we believe it's happening for a reason. It's happening for you and it's going to be positive. So now she comes up with another envelope. <laughs> and what is the, now, now okay, she, has, so. she gives you a choice though, doesn't she? She gives you a choice. What did she say she to you? She did. And, and I thought that was very pivotal in what she was doing and crucial in fact what she was trying to demonstrate by asking giving me a choice do you want to move forward or do you want to stay where you're at and I said oh five four three two one why not but I also prayed (laughs) right before and I opened it and lo and behold I was like I said sing your favorite song (laughs) on stage (laughs) Which I truly think I manifested because I was in the car with my kids. I was telling live from Las Vegas when we sing in the car. And then now here I'm live in Las Vegas in front of thousands of people. (laughs) But I was petrified and she quickly held on to me and she gave me a little squeeze and she started to lead. Happy birthday. Yes. Which I have to say, like, so, so many important lessons if you were really if you're open to seeing and hearing them right that she first of all gave you a choice because we do always have a choice we have a choice to move forward or stay stuck and i know some people it's hard maybe to hear that but we always have a choice so she gave you a choice and you pushed through your fear you were trusting her which is another i think important lesson is that there are people who want to rally around you and support you even though you'd never met her before And even though she had this radical idea to get you up on stage in front of all these people, and clearly I'm going to assume this is not something that you're normally not going to be the person who's comfortable in front of a big group of people, let alone 15,000 people. So that was coming out of your comfort zone. And then she gives you another opportunity. Now it's to sing on stage in front of everyone, which I would have been like mortified too. But she quickly said, here's how we can do it. Who has a birthday today? And everybody in the room joined you to sing happy birthday. So it made it feel easier, right? More supported. So what was happening now? Because I started to notice something changing you physically. And then she asked you if you were feeling any differently and, and tell everyone about that experience. So as we started to sing happy birthday, actually my legs were no longer shaking and my hands, because I think my hands were a dead giveaway, even just trying to hold the paper look just was yeah it was bad (laughs) um, as we we were singing happy birthday the mic wasn't shaking everywhere I was not hyperventilating anymore I was able to actually face the crowd because at first I didn't even want to look in that direction you're you're right you didn't really look up a lot I did not want to look in that direction at all I was like no (laughs) And then it was like, okay, I saw that one person. And then instead of it becoming about me, the focus is more on what I was doing. And I was singing somebody else happy birthday. And I was able to redirect my thought into the purpose of what I was doing. So I felt a lot more calm. Yeah, that's a great takeaway too. And so 
Did you wonder what was next at that point? <laughs> at that point, I was like, I, man, it can't get really worse than this too much more. I was thinking maybe she was going to have me do a show or something. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if she wasn't going to get into some kind of activity with you. But there was a third envelope mm -hmm. and she asked you if you wanted to open it. You said, yeah, at this point, right? You probably yeah. came this far. Why not? And mm -hmm. what was the third envelope? So the third envelope was an, a reward for doing everything. She gave me a free ticket for next year's convention, uh -huh. and which I thought was really good in the way she did all of that. I was just demonstrating that when you are able to move past your fears, you will be rewarded. And uh -huh. it was very true. Yeah. Because so at that point, I was expecting something. And still, it goes to show that our thoughts aren't always what they seem. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. So lots of nuggets in this episode, guys. I know sometimes if you're like me, you're, you're listening when you're driving. So we'll put a couple of these takeaways in the show notes, but go back and listen. So there's always a reward on oh, the other yeah. side of fear, right? Mm -hmm. And I love that. And okay, so when you think about this whole experience, so that was enough for me to want to meet you and talk with you. And then I heard you interviewed with James and then learned more about your backstory. And I was just like blown away. And Clearly, I feel like there's a bigger power moving in your life. There was a reason for you to be there. And so if I remember correctly, you've only been in real estate for a year, and this was the first time you ever came to family reunion. Yes. In fact, I will be completely honest with you. I got there and was I was not going to go, but my market center manager was like, hey, you're going to go, right? And I was like, no. <laughs> and she was like, Oh, and I just told her the cost is a little much right now and so forth. And she's, I knew you would say that. So I'll put you on a payment plan. Wow. <laughs> so she I really wanted like, you there. I was like, okay. And then I was telling my mom, I was like, oh, but I'm not sure because again, I was just feeling overwhelmed. And then my mom was like, I got the kids for you. Don't worry, just go. And then I was like, huh? And then my boyfriend was like, Hey, for Valentine's Day, I booked your hotel. And I was like, oh, how sweet. oh my God, I guess yeah. I'm going. And it was just really, it was all to me as God is just, because I even got there and there was so much traffic because there was a marathon. Yes. And I was very <laughs> overwhelmed. I'm not yes. going to lie. I, I called home. I said, oh my gosh, if I can't find my way, I'm coming home. <laughs> and then I was overwhelmed the first day. But I just kept going and working through all of that even. Really. So <laughs> yeah. clearly there was a purpose for you to be there. Really. The the universe, God was just moving through all these opportunities for you. And what do you think looking back now, you have learned about that experience at Family Reunion, the whole Mel Robbins experience. Why were you there? What has changed for you since being there? Well, I definitely feel like there was like God used me in a way to provide a message. And so I, I, a lot of people say, oh my God, you were amazing. I really didn't do anything except for show up as myself. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think that's like a very strong takeaway too, if anybody gets this, because a lot of the times we're preparing to be somebody else or to play the part of what we want others to think. And then just showing up as our true authentic self is yes. exactly what people need. And yeah. I feel like, she knew that and so she chose me for that purpose and the message was strongly clearly conveyed but at the same time i took a lot away from it too because not just that one experience but afterwards so many people came to tell me how connected they felt how uh, much of an impact that experience made on them and i was glad to be used in such a way i was still th things shaking late in the afternoon and sometimes even when i think about it i get a little flutter here and there but it was just very humbling to see how connected we are we really are and though we think in our brains that people are judging us it's we're only judging ourselves and we're creating all this fear upon ourselves because of the standards and the limitations that we place on ourselves oh yes <laughs> yeah it's true and um taking away from that entire experience and in these last six weeks or two months when this airs, I would definitely say I feel almost like responsible 
to continue to push through those fears because I was used in a way to to lead other people from my experience and given that tool I should use it and so sometimes when I start to feel like that I'm like no five four three two one I don't know just move just move just keep going just try it just move because that experience was super powerful and meaningful to so many people that if I don't feel like if I lived that out, it would be super unjust for everybody that was there to like to think that it didn't work just because I got lazy or something with it. So I feel like almost compelled to keep it in motion and in practice. So powerful, really so powerful. I just love how you're showing up here and you showed up the same way there. You were so willing to be authentic, vulnerable. And I just love so many things that you're saying here because it is it is true. We can create so many stories in our head and I've done it too. And every time I have found myself wrapped up in some story in my head, believing that things were true that weren't, it took me so far away from what I needed to be focused on or who I just need to be. And you realize that we're just getting in our own way. And when we can come back to that truth, that center, and really look back on it, I think that experience teaches us a lot. And something else that you talked about too is your story, right? What we're learning about, what you've been through, your story when you were sick with COVID and all these surgeries. And and I'm guessing that was why you shifted careers too, from nursing to real estate. So a lot of changes. And the things that we go through, all the experiences that we have good or bad. And I've been through some trauma in my life too. I I believe that we get to a point where we realize that at some point, the story doesn't just belong to us, that the story is meant to be shared because there are truths in the story and lessons that other people need to hear too. And you felt that support because so many people saw a part of themselves in you And you showed them, I I believe you showed them that they could be brave and strong too. I agree. I definitely agree. And I'm super honored to have had that opportunity and and to be completely honest with you, because at first I was like (gasps) mortified again, thinking about myself. (laughs) And the truth of the matter is that it's, it wasn't about me. And I wanted people to know that truly, because a lot of people were like, oh, tell me about you, about what happened. How did you meet Mel? I, I, it was just a chance encounter and God just said, Hey, maybe she would be perfect for this. Cause she doesn't want to do it. <laughs> so I don't know, but to, it was just all like a chance and, and a twist of fate that just happened to help ev- a lot of people. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. And I really appreciate what you said about how you feel this responsibility now to and, and listen, you're human, right? You catch yourself feeling the fear around something or the hesitation or the feeling that you want to hold yourself back. But because what you've gone through and so many people were able to watch it and you were able to show people that you can move through fear or do hard things, that now you feel responsible to keep pushing yourself in that direction so that you're continuing to be an example or a role model And that's a beautiful thing too, because you're going to see how much your life will grow from here. And I'm sure you're already feeling it now that you you can't be the same person you were before that day in February. No, definitely not. Which was also ironic because my mentor was telling me, you need to try social media. I would like you to do video recordings to this. And I, I would record them and then I wouldn't do anything with them. Oh, wow. <laughs> hundreds of posts of houses without myself in them. Mm-hmm. And so that was my homework. So I told her I nailed the assignment for sure. <laughs> I got on stage with Mel. <laughs> yeah, that is that is amazing too. The synchronicity of yeah. everything. It was just definitely meant to be. It was Yeah, because Mel takes your phone, you. <laughs> right? She takes your phone, she, you take a selfie and it's mm-hmm. on her Instagram where she's got a gazillion followers. So you're thrust into the limelight there. Plus, I know that there were a lot of us there taking pictures, posting. You got interviewed. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know James Shaw, he is a part of our KW world and has a, a live call every day. He's been doing that since COVID. And he's got 
hundreds of thousands of people on his page now throughout the real estate industry. So you're interviewed there. And now I've got you here. And gosh, I don't even know what other things you've been uh, asked to, to do or talk about. And so I think another lesson I believe we want to say is coming out of this conversation is when you're destined for something, no matter what you do to try to ignore it, no matter what you do to try to say it's not for you or let fear get in your way, the energy of the universe, God, right? The divine will find a way to just pull you in at some point if that's your destiny. So I think that's another thing we could say is a lesson from this experience. I definitely agree 100% with you. Yeah, you can run and hide, but he will find you <laughs> or Mel will find you. <laughs> yeah, I know Mel was talking that day about her technique, the 54321. Had you heard about that before? I had heard her briefly in the midst of my divorce, actually, and I had tried it a couple times. But with everything else, I had I, I stopped doing that. But I did understand the science of what she was speaking about. And it made complete sense to me. And when I was there, as it was, unfold, I wrote some beautiful notes. I was really into it. The science of it is definitely accurate in what she's saying. Yeah. And she did that. She demonstrated it too. Rather than doing the five, four, three, two, one the entire time, she would quickly divert like your attention quickly. She's very good at what she does. Yeah, she is definitely a captivating speaker for sure. So what happened when you went home? Were there some changes in the way you looked at things? Were there some changes in the way that you approached your day? Do you find that you're being a little more confident? I did. I actually went ahead and had conversations that I should be have that are difficult. And then I am moving. I have, I'm in the, the midst of moving. I have boxes everywhere on the side. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so um, trying to... Just move forward. I was scared to move, but I am going to move. And uh, it's, a, it's a better move for my family and so forth. So I think we'll be much happier. And yes, I'm just trying to be more social and do things. I also inscribed for Buffini. So I'm trying to make more personal contacts with people. And But yeah, just little by little. But yes, I am definitely getting some more confidence back. Yeah. Yeah, because to, I guess shift gears slightly, when you look at the fact that you were in, you were a nurse for 10 years, and then you went through such a really traumatic experience, I, I would imagine it's extremely traumatic. You were in the hospital for a long time, right? Yes, actually, I was bedridden for a long time. I had the COVID, was like in a semi-coma at home, because nobody really wanted to be interactive with somebody with COVID. Yeah. So then when I did go to the hospital, they ended up doing the spinal tap and then trying to do alternative therapies rather than brain surgery. So they did spinal surgery. And because the numbers were so high, each time the surgery was unsuccessful, I would have to lay in bed for three months mm -hmm. and then until the next surgery would come. So I did that for about two and a half, two and a half years, I want to say. A year and a half at first, and then about six months in between, and then I ended up with the brain surgery. So yeah, so it's quite quite some time, and then some physical therapy in between. But yeah, it was spinal fluid leaking and so forth. Wow, I mean, people listening to this, I, I'm sure are thinking, how'd you get through that? You know, that that's a lot, and that you're you were going through a divorce. You said you have four children, you couldn't work, you were very sick. It was. I'm sure getting hard at times, right, to stay positive and faithful. It had to have been really hard for you, not just physically, but emotionally too. So how do you, how did you get through that? So I, at first I was not myself to be completely honest with you because I had lost my vision and I couldn't speak. And then as I slowly got it, I was somewhat confused at times but i would have really bad headaches and so forth and i would just really i would pray i i can't lie i can't say anything other than just say it. there would be times i would be I'd, I'd have to get a chair and sit in the shower and i remember the cold water i would use super cold water for the headaches and i would just pray actually i would just say mother mary please have mercy i would just say that over and over again and 
I would get through like that. I would read Bible verses, small verses. I even started for every day of the month or the week or whatever. I would look up just the date and find a Bible verse that went corresponded with that number and just gave me faith that way. And I would try to apply it to my day. I'd read stories and do- I watched a lot of documentaries when I could because with the flashing lights, it was difficult. Mm. But I was just trying to find inspiration anywhere through my family through the bible through yeah. uh, through everything so i think what i'm hearing from that is it's faith over fear right yeah. you might feel the fear but you have to find the faith and that is all over my instagram that's why is I have it? faith over fear yeah. yeah and it's you know what i heard too is that you really were intentional about setting your mind on something positive right because we can get stuck on all of the bad things happening and, and gosh you would have give anyone probably would have given you a pass if you had a bad day for sure but at the same time it sounds like you knew you had a choice and you really were focused on choosing the positive looking at the positive outlook creating ways to focus your mind on things that were full of faith inspiration and thank gosh she did because here you are and so what made you decide to get into real estate? Because, you know, that's quite a, a difference from your previous career. But again, I don't know. There's people in that. that I heard you talk about people before. Yes. So I actually did business and construction for 17 years. So I, I had run a couple businesses and I did construction and then I transitioned into nursing to be with my children. So I would work nights and then I was able to sleep during the day and then still provide for my family. And I I remember during one of, I thought was going to be the hardest time of my life was during my divorce. I had a good friend of um, ours. He helped me through the real estate process of selling my house. And he was so kind and very flexible with his time. He knew I was a nurse. He would call me at night and he just was super touching to me at a time where I just needed one person to be nice. And and that really stood out to me. And I remember through all of this, I had seen a documentary about a real estate agent that actually was from Corona, California. She's a singer and she's passed away since, but she transformed her whole life in real estate. And I was like, so I called my friend and he does not work for Keller Williams, but he's very successful. And he said, Hey, I think that would be a great idea for you. And you're going to go to Keller Williams, right? And I was like, (laughs) <laughs> and he said, yeah. yes, they have amazing training there. I think you'd love it. It aligns with your faith and everything like that. He said, if I were to start again, I would start there. And he just guided me and I'll be uh, 100% honest and transparent at starting point with the real estate. I was definitely having a hard time connecting or trying to see my fit in and Jim Brown, he's the owner. He said he was speaking and of all the things that he could possibly say that just popped out to me, it said, use this as a vehicle. And when he said that it was like a light bulb turned on and I was like, oh yeah, he's right. I can use this to do the thing that I want to do. And then it reminded me of what happened with my friends, the way he conveyed kindness through what he was doing. And I I want to help people so I can use this, utilize this as that vehicle to do so. That's what I did. Absolutely. I I truly believe your business is a vehicle for you to live out your passion Mm -hmm. for you because most, I don't know, most people don't lay awake at night saying, I want to be a realtor. I want to be, yes, you can have dreams of doing certain businesses from a young age, but sometimes you find that your business becomes the pathway, the, the, the vehicle to really fulfill what you're passionate about, to contribute, to give back. And so I love that. I love that you're finding purpose through your business. And certainly you wouldn't have had this amazing experience with Mel Robbins that I believe is inspiring a lot of people if you hadn't gone into real estate. So it's a uh, a lot of incredible things when you look back, it's like a domino, right? They just, one starts falling into the other. And so what's next for Maricel? <laughs> well, I am currently working on expanding my business and Good. getting the foundation laid correctly, so forth. So we'll see. Hopefully I'll be doing my social media posts well. 
But yes, so I, I would like to do that and work more in the community and, and just really hone in on my business and hopefully retire my parents one day. Nice. So that's pretty much. That's great. Yeah. So is there a question that you wish I'd asked you that I haven't asked you? Is there anything else you'd like to share or leave with people who are listening? I would just say that like at the most difficult time where you can't find a reason to keep going, just believe. That's mm -hmm. it. Just believe. Just keep going and believing whatever it is. Because a lot of times we want to see it to believe it and just you know it's better to believe and then see it it's more powerful to do so i think there was a story about some seeds that a planter would water every day and he had to water the plant every single day the seeds before they would come up through the soil and if he missed one day it would die and he would just keep watering it and watering it and they didn't emerge from the soil for 10 years but then it just took off. And so I feel like that's just like with anything. If, if you miss a day of watering it, it might die and you don't know the potential that it had. So just you keep- You never it. know when it might sprout. You never know. Look, I would have never met so many people in my life and made so many connections if I just didn't go to our convention. So you, you never know what God has in store for you. So just keep believing that you're on the right path. Amazing. So listen, I think that's perfect. And we probably should just end right there because there's a lot that we shared in this that again, I think this might be an episode you want to play over because there's a lot of messages in what Maricel had to say and what you know what you were able to share through your story. So I love that. And I thank you for joining me. This was really thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So thanks again, everyone for being here. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. And listen, if you have Mel's number, could you let me know? Because I'd love for her to be on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs>